What is up, YouTube? It is Pete coming in hot with another video. So today, um, what we're going to talk about is um, we're going to address a misconception um, about red pill in the sense that um, it's about a lot more than just intersex relations and dating. Now, obviously, red pill, MGTOW, and all that stuff. That's definitely a core um, that gets a lot of people turned on to the red pill, okay, taking it and so on. But what you have to understand is that red pill very much goes beyond just intersex. The idea of red pill in the macro sense, not the micro sense that most channels focus on, is that this applies to multiple facets of modern society. Um... And honestly, I think you can apply it to any society from the very first civilization of Sumer in the Fertile Crescent all the way to, to today. In that you can sum it up as nothing is as it seems, right? That's what the idea of red pill is. The idea of red pill is they sold you the blue pill version, but the red pill version is how it actually is. So what we want to talk about is how a red pill aware person is kind of in tune not just with intersex relations and where that's going and the rise of MGTOW and in response to a certain movement and all that, but how it applies to other aspects of life. So I did put some notes here, um, just some some core tenets um, that I'm going to, um, to, to mention, and then I think we're going to go into various arenas that I have written down here. So today I'm going to talk about um, education, we're going to talk about politics, we're going to talk about media, we're going to talk about show business, we're going to talk about intersectionality, we're going to talk about religion, and lastly, we're going to talk about business as the last one, okay? And we're going to talk about how Red Pill extends to, to that, you know, what we think it is versus what it actually is, and so on and so on and so on. So let's start, I guess, with the core tenets. So the core tenets, what I mean by this is that things that are very, very true of society today, but we just sort of don't really seem to examine them. We are noticing, for example, the first tenet, a huge increase in um, no responsibility and no accountability. So I mentioned this in my video the other day, Hey, ladies, how can you improve yourself? You know, what types of, you know, uh, value should you adopt? Accountability and responsibility is a great start. But it's not just the ladies. Um, I think we're seeing an increase in general from my generation, the millennials, onwards. This sharp decrease in responsibility and accountability. Um, and we're also seeing as a result of this decrease in responsibility and accountability, AKA when we screw up, we take responsibility for it. What we're doing instead is engaging in victimhood, blame shifting. Um, I, I call it the victim Olympics, um, basically a pissing contest of who has it worse, um, which goes hand in hand, again with comparison, right? So we have no accountability or responsibility. We're constantly engaging in comparison. And of course, inst looking at Instagram and Facebook and Twitter of pictures of people traveling and shit all the time and stuff like this, that's not going to help you find happiness. Um, and then there's a uh, victimhood, okay? There's also a complete lack of um, attempt to understand one another. Nobody wants to do that. We do not live in the age of intent and context. They do not matter anymore. Interpretations and feelings matter. So gone are the days when people said, hey, what did you mean by that? What's the context um, behind what you said? No. How I feel about what you said and how I interpret what you meant matters. So that's a lot to unpack. So let's unpack it. So let's start with that big one that I just mentioned last. Intent and context doesn't matter. Interpretations and feelings matter. Why? Look at Twitter, 144 characters, right? You think you're going to squeeze context into 144 characters? That's why I never got on Twitter. 
because Twitter, it only gives you 144 characters to say a very baseline statement without offering any context or intention behind what you said. And then everyone attacks you, the Twitter mob, we call it. They attack you. And then you just, you're just stuck issuing an apology for something that like you thought your intent was clear, but their interpretation superseded your intent. It's a nightmare. So a blue pill person will look at that and be like, well, this is just normal. This is just normal. You know, somebody tweets something, um, the context isn't clear. We're going to interpret it as, you know, bigoted or whatever. We're going to get you canceled, which where I come from, canceled is the idea of, hey, um, whatever you do for a living, I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you removed from that so that you basically have no income. That's canceling, at least um, as I understand it. Um, so yeah, when you couple the intent and the context not mattering, as well as the interpretations and feelings mattering, with no responsibility and accountability, what are you left with? You're left with people who make the other party responsible for how they feel and how they interpret things. When you couple those two things together. So this is a problem, right? You have people that say, hey, I'm not going to bother to take on a little responsibility here and ask them to clarify their intent. To give me context behind what they're saying because it's not clear to me. Instead, I'm going to interpret what was said or what I saw. We see this a lot too with videos where like you'll see a recording that starts halfway through an incident and then it escalates to the end where it gets crazy and nobody has the build up. Same idea. Um, so that's the visual version of it. And because nobody takes responsibility or accountability for what they say and do, we basically have people shifting the responsibility from themselves to the person who said it without asking them to clarify the intent. Instead, they just say, hey, this is my interpretation of it. Therefore, that must be what the intent is. The intent made me feel this way, AKA triggered, ergo, I'm gonna get the Twitter mob on your ass and I'm gonna get you canceled. So a red pill aware person is just gonna say, I'm not going on Twitter, done. I'm not on Twitter, case closed. The next one is uh, comparison. So comparison, right? You're always comparing yourself to other people. This is a recipe for disaster. You're going to be very unhappy if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people. I was actually telling my coworker this um, the other day. Um, she and I, we, um, we do taxes for a living. So I guess if you didn't know, that's what I do. And um, she prepared fewer tax returns than I did for the week. Whatever. It doesn't matter, right? So she was like, how many tax returns did you prepare? And I told her my number. And she was like, wow, I only did this. I feel terrible. And I'm like, why? You did your best given everything that you have going on. And she was like, I don't know, it just makes me feel inadequate. And I said to her, well, if you look at the board, something I wrote on the board at work before this whole pandemic thing hit, I wrote comparison is the thief of joy on the board. And I said, it's still there, right? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, do you know what it means? And she's like, kinda. And I said, well, if you spend your time comparing yourself to other people, you'll never be happy. She was like, yeah, I got that. And I was like, also though, something that's kind of implied in there, but you know, in the world of intentions, it's good to kind of explain the intent behind why you wrote something on the board. It's also the idea that the only person you should be comparing yourself to is who you were yesterday. When you wake up in the morning, right, you're at a certain level. When you go to bed at the end of that day, were you better at that point than you were at the beginning? And the answer should be yes, most of the time. Sometimes you're the same, sometimes you have a little dip, it happens. But the point is that living life isn't a competition, everybody is pretty much winging it, to be honest with you, and everyone goes at their own pace. And that's the truth. So comparison is the thief of joy. So a great way to um, not do that, again, social media not having it is a good way to avoid that. Because if you're on social media all the time, especially like Instagram and stuff, you know, you see all these people living what you think is their best life, but that's not true. You don't see all their hardship. You don't see all their struggle on Instagram. So you're seeing the best um, parts of their life. You're getting a window into the best snippets of their life. So you think objectively that their life is better than yours. And then you start getting depressed, anxious. 
it's been proven. They actually did studies where people who don't use social media are actually less anxious and they're less depressed. And um, I think in in um, Denmark they did a they did a study where they had one control group stay on social media. They had another one get off for a couple of weeks. The one that got off for a couple of weeks, they actually their mood improved. So what does that tell you? Um, stop wasting your time comparing yourself to other people. Otherwise, you'll never be happy, right? So we live in a society, though, where comparison is something that most people are doing in this superficial world. So the blue-pilled version of people are buying into that. They're on Instagram comparing themselves to other people, never measuring up to the mark of somebody else. And as a result, they never engage in self-improvement, which once again ties back to um, responsibility and accountability. It's on you to improve yourself. And if you're spending all your time looking at other people and how they're doing, you'll never even bother asking the question, well, how do I go about improving myself? Because you're too busy being sad and anxious about people who are doing, quote unquote, better than you, when really they're just on a different path. Blame shifting is a big one. Victimhood. Um, who's got it worse, right? You see this on the news all the time, you know? And that's where you get these ideas of privilege and stuff like this. Well, this group of people has it worse than that group of people. And we know that this group of people has it worse than the other group of people. But again, that ties to responsibility and accountability once again. At what point do you just say, okay, definitely true that some of my circumstances, I can't control them. So I'm not going to worry about them. But there are a lot of circumstances here that I probably can control and I can improve. But am I willing to take on the responsibility that comes with taking my life into my own hands and improving it? Am I willing to do that? Most people would rather complain. And Twitter is the perfect platform to complain. So again, when you have Twitter and you have all these people complaining in 144 characters or less with no context, what does it do? It creates an image of the world that seems a lot worse than it actually is. Trust me that nothing is what it seems. We'll get into that later when I go through the various categories. But also understand that, um, yeah, it's not as, nowhere near as bad as people paint it to be. People are very good, especially in first world countries, people are very good at making things seem worse than they actually are. You got a bed, you got a roof over your head, you got food on the table, you got place to take a shit, you could shower. You're doing okay. Okay? So... Um, you know, victimhood, blame shifting, projecting, all that stuff. To me, it's just another way to dodge responsibility. Dodge responsibility. And last but not, but not least, there's no attempt to understand. Okay? So people don't make an effort to understand each other, which ties into the whole intent versus interpretation. People do not ask, what did you mean by that? I'm not sure I understand that. Can you clarify that? People don't say these things. People just say, oh, so what you're saying is, like that Jordan Peterson interview with that British chick, so what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, instead of, hey, what did you mean by that? Can you clarify that? This is the world that we live in. We live in a very accusatory world, a very presumptuous world. So the idea of benefit of the doubt, we don't have that anymore. And you're seeing this translate too in the legal system too and how the Twitter mob reacts and stuff like this. It's not, it's not innocent until proven guilty anymore. It's guilty until proven innocent. You see this in false allegations all the time, which is a very specific subset of the red pill, false allegations, right? You're guilty until innocent instead of innocent until guilty. And even if you prove yourself innocent, your reputation is still ruined. This is the world that we live in, okay? Now, a blue pill person would look at everything that I just discussed here and think, well, that's just dandy. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. You know, it's, it's, um, it's treating it like we are holding the world accountable, okay? But then when you kind of shift the lens in an introspective direction and say, hey, hold yourself accountable, oh, nobody wants to have that conversation. So I don't really care um, where you come from. Okay, or you know what your background is, or who you sleep with behind closed doors, or how you feel inside, or whatever. Okay, accountability is accountability. 
Intent versus interpretation. Context versus feelings. Comparison being the thief of joy. Victimhood and blame shifting. Not attempting to communicate and understand sides of the story. And this is why we're, we have such an angry, uh, frustrated society, I think, these days, where people are at each other's throats. Because everyone's saying, you make the effort to understand me first, and then maybe I'll make an effort to understand you. Okay? So the saying goes, pay it forward, not pay it back. Think about that. So that's pretty much some of the core tenets. Um, so just to recap again, um, intent and context don't matter anymore. See Twitter, 144 characters to really illustrate that and how the Twitter mob overreacts to everything. Uh, instead of intent and context, interpretation and feelings matter more than ever now. Um, personal responsibility and accountability, no. Not interested in that. Um, we have no problem just engaging in a uh, victimhood Olympics, a pissing contest. Who has it worse? The person who has it worse gets to complain more. And the person who has it worse gets to engage in more blame shifting. They get to engage in having less personal accountability because they have it so bad. These are the people that get to um, also not make a conscious effort to understand. Everyone has to make a conscious effort to understand them, but they don't have to make a conscious effort to understand anybody else. These are the realities of the red pill world. But when you get lost in the arguments in the comment sections on the internet, as a blue-pilled person, you just kind of get lost in it all. You don't see it for what it really is, that you're dealing with somebody that thinks like this. My feelings and interpretation are more important than what you meant and your context. Um, you're responsible. I'm not. You're going to be held accountable and canceled or whatever by the mob. I am not. Because I am a bigger victim than you, so because I am higher up on the victim hierarchy, if you say something to me, you get screwed. But if I say something to someone higher than me on the victimhood hierarchy, something happens to me, so on and so on and so on. So constant comparison, constant blame shifting, constant projecting. You can see this is a very toxic society, but this is where we live. You know, things like I talked about in the last video, discipline, personal accountability, self-respect, self-control, um, I think I have it written down here. Moral code, self-awareness, modesty, right? These are not the tenets of modern society. There are older societies where, you know, it might have been like this. But it's definitely not like this today. So, um, sometimes, yeah, when you give someone too much freedom, I don't want to say it like that, but... You kind of get what I mean? I guess my intention is when you give someone too big of a space to just say stupid shit, that's more accurate. I, I, re I retract the word freedom and replace it with giving someone too big a space to just say whatever they want. Um, you just kind of have this toxic cesspool. And I always come back to Metal Gear Solid 2 with the ponds and all that because that's just on point, man. Everybody's got their echo chamber. They think their worldview is right, and they pretty much live their life by these tenets that I have outlined. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the arenas, okay? So let's start with education. So education's a big one, right? So in a blue pill society, obviously education wants you um, to learn things a certain way, okay? Um, you know, we see this like with, with stupid shit too, like core math, right? You have to do it like the core way that they want it when there's easier ways to do it. History is written by the victor, so they teach history based on who won the battles and all that stuff. So, you know, there's already kind of a bias on that. Science, for the most part, they teach it how it is unless it's inconvenient for the narrative. Um, and a good example of this is religion removing evolution from the teachings. Um, things like this, right? But it's abundantly clear that schools are essentially indoctrination centers, okay? They want you to think a certain way. Certain behaviors are discouraged. Um, 
it tends to be the boys that um, their masculine behavior is discouraged these days in the schools and stuff like this. Okay? Now, you know, a blue-pilled person would just be like, oh, you know, that's just us trying to encourage good behavior. But what really a red pill person sees is we're encouraging our boys to engage in feminine behavior. Boys need a space to be boys, okay? So you can say that boys will be boys is, you know, something that encourages a certain type of culture and all that. But the truth is that boys will be boys. And also, girls will be girls. There are spaces. I mean, look at the Boy Scouts. Look what they did to that, right? All those extracurricular activities that used to be for boys. Now now it's like, hey, you know, girls' um, natural desire. They want to they wanna get their foot in the door. The running joke is that boys can't have fun without the woman around, you know? It's like, oh, am I hearing you having fun in there? Not without me, you're not. Um, but jokes aside, I mean, even in, in the early education stages, you know, a red pill aware man or a red pill aware woman will look at this and be like, nah, bullshit. You got to teach them both sides of the story. You got to you got to say that, yes, you know, um, competition is OK, but there's times when cooperation, which is a more feminine trait, is also OK. You just have to kind of know the time and the place. But, um, yeah, education obviously, you know, wants to tell you things like, you know, government is good and uh, individuality is bad. You know, think about the good of the group and all that shit. But, um, no, individuality is very, very important. Um, especially when you consider, you know, the reality that, um, you know, at best, nobody outside of your phone contacts list gives a rat's ass what happens to you. So it's like you're wasting your time and energy caring about a group that probably doesn't care for you you have to establish relationships with people in order for them to care about you so whenever people talk about this whole empathy thing i kind of laugh you kind of have you have to develop an emotional attachment to someone to have an empathetic connection with them in the first place okay so i guess that's all i really gotta say about education so let's move on next politics politics is fun so politics in a blue pill world um, you believe you have choice, okay? You believe that, um, you know, your vote matters. And I guess, you know, in locally it matters. But the higher up you get on the food chain, closer to federal you get, the less your vote matters. Um, that's just the truth. But in a blue pill world in politics, um, you know, what do we really have? Well, we got three divisions, the real three branches, okay? We have the politicians, the ambassadors, and all that. We've got the soldiers and the warriors, the military. And then finally, we got the spies, the agents, the, the spy network, right? Those are the big three. Um, and, you know, in a blue pill world, what do you tell, what do they tell you? They tell you that the government has your best interest at heart. The military is out to protect you, the citizens. And um, the spies, we need them to protect American interests, or if you're in another country, the spies are to protect your country's interests, be it China, Russia, a European country, an Asian country, or some other country, okay? But here's the truth. Um, yeah, politicians do not have your interests at heart. Politicians have lobbyists' interests, and those who have the money to pay them off, their interests at heart, which tend to be the businesses that they use as proxies to violate your rights indirectly. I talked about that in the I'm Out video. A red pill aware person is aware of that. A red pill aware person is also aware that um, the military is more than just an, uh, a strong arm to defend, quote unquote, American citizens. Um, it's more about strong arming smaller countries and getting them to fall in line with our vision for the world. And you can see this power play between America, Russia, the European Union, China. These guys are all vying for, for the crown um, with their foreign policy. Through proxy wars, funding certain groups, taking advantage of certain you know 
conflicts in regions in order to get access to resources, um, be it you know poppy fields, oil, minerals, whatever it is. And the spies, I mean, well, you know what the spies are. They're the, they're the brains. They're the ones that come up with all these destabilization plans. They're the ones that come up with all these really screwed up surveillance programs and all this crazy shit. So a red pill aware person is aware of the true nature of politics and what it's all about. And the true nature of politics can be summed up as rules for thee, but not for me. That's the red pill truth of politics. Rules for thee, not for me. And you can even see the two parties, the conservatives and the liberals, fighting each other every day. It's okay when my team does it, but it's not okay when your team does it. They treat their politics like their favorite sports team. And that is true privilege in a first world country where your party getting in or getting out is like the equivalent of your team losing the Super Bowl. It's not like, hey, if my party loses, I lose my job and there's no food on the table and all this stuff. Does it affect some people like that where it's that close to home? Of course. But in the for the majority of people in a first world country, it's just like, ha, my team won, your team lost. Ha 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 ha. And that's and that's kind of what it's like. So, I think honestly that um politics in America definitely is very juvenile. Also in western cultures too. Um just the things that go through legislature, it's just It's like really this is what we're voting on. Okay. Okay. So a red pill aware person doesn't engage with it, just completely unplugs. So, you know, unplugs from the politics, um, kind of teaches their kids. That's the whole, how they address the education thing. Teach your kids a little bit on your own. Teach your kids some red pill truths. You know, you don't just leave it to the indoctrination center to tell your kid everything. Um, the third category is media. So media is a really big one. Only about 30% of American citizens believe the media is telling the truth, and that's true. So in a blue pill world, um, you know, blue pillars, they tend to listen to the news. They pick their news channel, and they say, that's the truth. This is actually what happened. Yes. So conservatives pick Fox. Liberals pick, I don't know, CNN. Conservatives read the New York Post in my state. Um, liberals read the New York Times. Conservatives drink Dunkin' Donuts, liberals drink Starbucks, you know, they got their they got their lanes, they got their media and all that. Um, liberals dominate social media, that's no secret. Um, you know, conservatives try to get social media, they get accused of hate speech, harassment, and bullying because the liberals dominate all the companies, so parlor and stuff like that gets shut down. So the red pill truth is kind of leaking into the, like, the... The official narrative, like you're actually seeing them struggling to suppress information, which is why this whole censorship wave is happening. But the point is that in in blue pill world, you believe the media at face value. But that's, again, just another proxy arm of the government. No different than corporations and other stuff. But, of course, the red pill truth knows that, you know, as George Carlin says, you know, when he was talking about the, the Persian Gulf War, the first war on all channels plus cable, Pick a channel. What kind of war do you want? Watch it on this channel. The war's going really well. Watch it on this channel. The war's the worst thing that could have ever happened in the history of the American people. So again, the red pill solution to that is to form your own conclusions. But obviously media can't be believed. So media obviously is full of shit. Politics is full of shit. Teachers are full of shit. Everybody's full of shit. Next is show business, so that's art, film, TV, music, athletics. We talk about this, Cardi B and that kind of shit. What is this about? Yes, Queen Slay! You know? Telling these people that they're more important than they actually are. Blue Pill will tell you that everyone is special, and show business will tell you that. Everyone is special. Nobody is not special. But the truth is, uh, again, George Carlin, I love citing this guy. This world has a few winners and a whole lot of losers, okay? And the sooner you understand that red pill truth, the better off you're going to be. I know that's nuclear bomb level truth. I know it hurts like hell. But the sooner you accept it, the better off you're going to be, okay? And show business, you know, it's no secret that, you know, for example, in intersex relations, which is a huge focus of red pill, they always try to make the husband and dad look like a complete fucking dimwit. 
and the wife and mother is like this stunning brave person that's just a friggin genius what you have to understand is that you do have some households where the mom is the brains i grew up in a house where my mom was the brains um she ran the household but my dad was also very smart and brilliant in other fields but when it came to running the house and the finances and stuff like that my mom was the brains but they made it work but most of the time is not like that that's an exception not the rule so you know you have tv saying this you have music saying yes queen slay go ahead and be a 304 um and you'll still get to have a marriage happily ever after like the disney movies told you when you were a little girl beauty and the beast cinderella the little mermaid but it's not like that it's not like that okay there are tangible consequences when you live your life irresponsibly i talked about this in the last video you know, and this ties in again, this is just reinforcing this lack of accountability, lack of responsibility, you know, instead of relying on yourself to actually build a life, what do you do? You put it all on someone else. And the government is like, Hey, did somebody say they want us to save the day? Well, don't worry. Big government will help you because government causes so many problems. So how are you going to solve a problematic government? Oh, here's a great solution. More government. No, that's a terrible solution, right? The blue pill aware person, the blue pill person, not blue pill aware, the blue pill person, though, will look at show business and say, no, the way art depicts it, the way Disney movies depict it, the way film and television and music and, you know, all these sports stars that post their opinions on Twitter, the way these people talk, this is how it actually is. And it's like, no, this is not how it actually is. This is what they're trying to sell you. The red pill truth, though, is that um, none of this is true. Go out into the world and experience it and see for yourself. Uh, the next one is intersectionality. So I love talking about intersectionality boulevard. Basically, the more different from me, white, heterosexual, cisgendered male, that you are, the more special you are, the more oppressed you are, the more um, different and unique and quirky you are. But I keep saying this, right? You can believe it in your blue pill Twitter fantasy all you want. It does not change the fact though that in a red pill aware world, nobody outside of your family, your friends, and at best your phone contacts list, which could be your extended family, your co-workers, and maybe some good friends. Nobody else is going to care what happens to you. I hate to break it to you. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Again, on Intersectionality Boulevard, they think people that look like me are waking up every day like, how can I ruin your day? How can I oppress you today? How can I make your day horrible just because you exist? And the truth is, nah, it's not like that at all. Completely indifferent. Completely indifferent. Um, not looking to ruin your day. In fact, I encourage anyone who exercises morals, accountability, um, they actually critically think for themselves, things like this. That to me is far more important than identity politics. You know? Ooh, somebody did this horrible thing. My first question isn't, what color were they? My first question isn't, are they cis or trans? Who do they sleep with behind closed doors? Are they a man or a woman? My first question is, why did they do it? You know, the rational question, oh, someone did a terrible thing. Why? Not, not these stupid superficial characteristics that don't matter. But in the blue pill world, they think this whole intersectionality boulevard business, identity politics, is somehow this really, really important thing when it's really not. A red pill aware person's like, look, I don't give a shit about any of that. Do you have morals? Do you have code? Do you have ethics? Are you responsible? Do you hold yourself accountable? Are you the kind of person that's constantly trying to better yourself? Do you blame the rest of the world? Or do you acknowledge that when you screw up, it's time to make this right? Are you, a, um, are you a pleasure to speak with? Are you someone where even if we disagree, do you at least make an attempt to understand me? Or are you the kind of person that just shuts down and stonewalls me every time someone disagrees? These are the kind of things. Merit. Character. Things like that. That's what a red pillow wear person cares about. So when you're dealing with people that don't have integrity... Ladies, in your case, dealing with bad boys, or in our case, dealing with 304s, 
Yes, we have something to say about it. A red pill aware person has something to say about it and they will hold you accountable. They will call you on your BS. And it is not sexist, it is not bigoted, it is not misogynistic, it is not hate-filled to hold you accountable and call you on your BS. But the blue pill world has convinced you that it's okay for you to behave this way when it's not. And um, the second to last is business, of course. So business we tend to know is bullshit. It's no secret, right? Advertising's bullshit. Um, and generally, you're free to have your own small business. You're free to invest in stocks and bonds and things like this until you screw with the quote-unquote the untouchables, the elites. Um, for example, the elites hedge funds wanted a short GameStop and then a bunch of people on Reddit, this was not insider information, got together and were like, nah, we're going to buy it up and make it worth more. And now the hedge fund boys are like, hey, no, we're going to try to get the laws changed said you can't do that anymore. Oh, I get it. Rules for thee, not for me. Very similar to politics, right? These people thought they couldn't get touched. They got touched. Take the L. So in a blue pill world, it's like, oh, okay. You know, the rich people can do all this stuff, but nobody else can. We're just a bunch of filthy peasants. But the red pill aware person's like, nah, fuck it. We're going to get together on Reddit and we're going to go buy a bunch of GameStop stock. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. So yeah, blue pill says, oh, you know, don't mess with the elites. Red pill's like, nah, we're going to mess with them. So again, you just kind of have this awareness where you're like, listen, I see your bullshit and I'm calling you out on it. And I'm going to act on it in some cases. Like red pill, um, buying up all these stocks, for example. Red pill men in the Wall Street group, rather. And last but not least is religion. So religion, why does the state tend to have a problem with religion, especially like state-dominated ideologies like communism and socialism and things like this? Well, because religion is usually at odds with the state, right? Religion is what some people would argue as based, not cringe, based. They're the kind of group that's like, hey, listen, here's just some moral rules to live your life by. Sensible rules, you know? Ten Commandments, shit like that. Obviously, the first three are religion-based, fine. Pfft, as an atheist, put that to the side. But the rest of them, it's, it's kind of fair. Like, hey, don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat. Basic shit, right? Um, obviously, sometimes it goes too far, like, for example, stoning people for premarital sex, locking people up for premarital sex when it was them who got sexually assaulted, you know. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say more about that. Sometimes it goes too far, but it's kind of funny when, as an atheist, I can kind of look at a religious system and kind of see the merits of at least the morality, I don't care about the book, I don't care about the building, I don't care about the organization, and I don't care about the man in the sky. But I definitely respect your right to worship whoever you want, whatever you want, even if you want to believe in like some polytheistic you know, pantheon from ages past. Go right ahead. But I can appreciate the morals that a lot of these religions do teach. Um, sometimes they misstep, of course. You know, that's the flaws of ancient texts. But, um, you know, just kind of living a morally fulfilling life, I can kind of get behind that. So religion is one of those things where, yeah, you know, we talk about how the um, through these allegorical um, stories in the books, yeah, atheists, some of them, especially the very, you know, arrogant ones, will be like, oh, that's all a crock of shit. And they might say, like, blue pill is believing in those books at face value while red pill is, like, seeing it for what it really is. Fine. I kind of just threw this one on as an afterthought. But, yeah. Recapping, um, education, politics, media, show business, intersectionality, religion, and business. These things kind of show us in a blue pill world that everything is as it seems. Believe the teachers. The government has the public's interest at heart. Believe what you see on TV and social media. Show business the way they depict it in the films and the music and the television shows is exactly how it is. Um, the more different you are from me in appearance, sexual preference, and all that stuff, the more special you are. Um, and of course, yeah, believe the elites because the elites always have your best interests at heart, right? That's what Blue Pill says. While Red Pill, a Red Pill aware person will look at all that and go, yo, that's bullshit. 
So as you can see, it does extend beyond just merely intersex relations. It goes way beyond that. Um, but a red pill aware person will look at this world, navigate it, they'll acknowledge what they can control to prevent these things, these insidious um, behaviors behind the scenes at the top of these food chains, politicians, CEOs, and all this crap. They control what they can to keep that at bay from affecting them directly, as it should be, because again, everyone outside your family, friends, and phone contact list doesn't give a shit about you, so you gotta look out for your own. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Because you think, oh, if I give a shit about these people, they'll care about me. No, they'll take advantage of you, most likely. Unless, of course, you establish some sort of connection with that person and establish empathy. Empathy is not just automatically given and implied. Anyway, though, um, yeah, a red pill person, though, can kind of navigate this and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to control what I can. And what I can't control, like legit, I can't do anything about it. I'm not going to worry about it. There's plenty of champions of justice out there. But a red pill aware person also knows that if they get a little too influential, um, they could end up like Edward Snowden on the run, Julian Assange, who knows where the hell he is. But the point is, if you get a little too influential, you go a little too against the grain, you start buying up GameStop stock, you kind of uncover codes in the matrix, lines in the matrix, so to speak. Um, yep, the system's very quick to react, isn't it? Yep. So, yeah, just, just understand that none of these institutions are above using things for their own gain. I mean, look at this pandemic, right? Look what the government's reaction... Uh, to it did to small businesses it basically destroyed so many small businesses but the big businesses are doing just fine aren't they and all they have to say is here's a little ppp loan here's a little stimulus check and here's a little economic injury disaster loan good luck to you they just throw you a bone to make it feel make them feel like they did something they're not here for you understand that the public will always be the government's number one enemy and it will also be the number one enemy of all of these systems I outlined, as well as the number one customer and consumer. So they have a vested interest in keeping these people bullshitted. And this kind of stuff trickles down to things like intersex relations, to how men and women perceive each other, to how white and non-white people perceive each other, to how gay and straight people perceive each other, to how cis and trans people perceive each other, and how people of the various faiths of the world perceive each other. It's absolutely crazy. You don't think all this crazy shit at the top trickles down, but it does over time. When you erode the systems that gave us the moral code to be better, no shock that nobody has morals. Everybody's morally bankrupt by the end of it. Everybody's undisciplined. Nobody wants to take responsibility for their choices. And why would they? The government's going to create a big-ass safety net to catch you and save you from your mistakes. Unless you look like me, then, then yeah, then then it sucks. And in divorce court, if you have the same anatomy as me, um, yeah, you're fucked. So that's pretty much all I got to say. This is how red pill expands. Um, it affects everyone. So if you think it doesn't affect you, it does. It absolutely does. But you can kind of go against the grain by just being better. Same as what I said in the last video. So, you know, discipline, moral code, self-control, self-awareness, self-respect, and modesty when interacting with the world. And you will have an easier time in this world. But, yes, once you wake up to the world and you kind of see it for what it is, there is no going back. I hope you found this information insightful. I thought it was kind of refreshing to go over things that were a little bit outside of just intersex relations. But just remember... Um, if you feel like that what I'm suggesting here is kind of selfish in nature, just remember outside of your family, your friends, and at best your phone contacts list, which has your extended family and coworkers in it probably, you get hit by a bus tomorrow, nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. And even your family will have to move on eventually. How do I know? Experience. My dad died 10 years ago. Gotta move on. So the world's going to keep going no matter what you do. So you might as well make your time on this earth the best you can possibly make it and not give a shit too much what a bunch of other people think about you. Okay? So that's all I got. I'll see you guys for the next one. I know this was long. Leave a comment. 
feel free to subscribe if you want to. Leave a dislike. But please, whatever you do, do not be a wuss and report the video, okay? If you don't like what you saw, just move on with your day. It's not for everybody. You guys take care now. See you around.